6.2, 6.5, diesel engine, mechanical DB2 injection pump timing. I've already done a video on the different methods, such as using a screwdriver to check your timing but not know what number it is. Talking about the timing light method with the adapter, the pulse adapter, and the snap-on LumiMag 1 and 2. So I'm going to actually do it. I got all three of them. Well, I got the LumiMag and the uh, pulse adapter hooked up. And I'm going to show the screwdriver method of just checking where your timing is. This truck is red. Red's a 1009. Obvious reasons why it's red. It used to be all green. But before that was all, before my son, as a 13 year old, took it down and painted it, he did a real good job until he drove in an ice storm. Then the green started coming off. But red here has the best running 6.2 or 6.5 that I own. When we first got it, it came from a Louisiana GSA purchase. Uh, let's see if we can see the tiny marks. The Tommy Marks. Let me get the camera to it. No. Where are we at? There we are. You can see that the injection pump side, which is the top of the screen, this part right here, that line is a line width to the path, driver's side of the vehicle to the right of the mark on the engine. When we first got this truck, it was all the way to the driver's side. This thing smoked, it stumbled, it's just terrible. I didn't have any of the timing setups to check it, or the knowledge, or the tools. So we just moved the pump back to a line width advanced. Because that's all GM and Chevy and the military ever said to do, is just line the lines up and drive it. Maybe if you go a line width advanced, you can get a little more power. That's where red is. My son drove it in high school, drove it in college, and now it's back home to rest with me. Uh, I'm doing this one because this engine has the most power, is the quietest of any of my six, any of my diesels, has the most non-turbocharged power, and starts every time, no matter how hot or cold it is. Now, yes, when it's been sitting for about an hour and a half on a hot day, the glow plugs don't come on, and they really should, and it'll crank for a little bit, but it still starts. It puts a little cloud of protest blue smoke out every now and then, but that's not so bad. Um, first method is going to be the, get the camera on it. I think you can see it. Let me zoom in a little bit. Way down in there. It's going to be that little arm down there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start it up. And I'm going to move this arm in, just like that. That's all I'm going to do. That's the advance arm. Well, I'm not have this, I can't sit there with the engine running because the fan will kill it. Uh, if the timing is too far advanced, it will kill the engine. If the timing is too far retarded, nothing will happen. If it wants to stutter and shake and just throw a fit, your timing's perfect. <laughs> Makes sense, doesn't it? I'm hoping you can still hear me once I start the engine up. I hope my camera doesn't... Let me take the camera down. Let me take the camera down while I start the engine up. That way it doesn't fly away. So we're putting the camera back up. Whoops. Got for the hood latch. And I am going to move that arm. See it's shaking and it's not happy. Let's back up a little bit. It actually smoked when I did that. See, as smooth as can be. Push that arm, and it's just not happy. And it's putting out a little bit of blue smoke. So that 
using your butt dyno is how you want it to be. But what's that mean number-wise? Well, good question. One of the ways of checking your timing is putting this clamp, let me zoom in again, that clamp on the injection. Number one injection, there's a ground wire, there's another wire underneath that goes on that clamp, and they lead to this box. This box is an MT257B diesel pulse adapter. You turn it on, hook a timing light to this wire here, and let's see if we can see the timing marks down below. get an angle on it to see it. And the fan works. I can't get it on video, but it's right on the zero. And I got this set to zero. So that's zero degrees timing with that setup. Then Get my tripod moved around a little bit here. Well, we'll just leave it like this. You can kind of see the numbers. I got to stand it out. On the snap on. MT80. The degrees keep coming back. I don't think it goes more than nine negative. Every time it goes, it goes nine and a half. It doesn't want to do much more than that. There. Sorry about the confusion. All right. We're just gonna look at that. If I rev it up. to negative 6.5 at 1300 RPM. My idle's right around, supposed to be 650, 700, right where it should be. So this thing is very negative. I got 9.5 degree offset, which we're supposed to have for the stock uh, timing tab on a 6.2. This one works perfect at negative 9.5 at idle and negative 6.5 at 1300 RPM. My cow dog truck with a 6.5 turbo optimizer GEP 6.5 turbo, the Banks turbo it said at eight degrees positive at idle and about two, two and a half. Well, I got, actually I got three positive at 1300 RPM. That's the happy spot for that engine. This engine, the happy spot is negative 9.5 at idle. Why? I don't know. But that, but you can see this one's showing negative 9.5. The timing light was right on zero. So the two different methods give you two totally different timings. Doesn't help by the fact that nobody GM, Chevy, AM General, nobody published numbers. AM General in one publication for the M998 Humvee says it should be negative four degrees timing plus or minus two degrees at 1300 RPM. With that in mind, this one's right on it. It's negative 6.5 at 1300 RPM, so it's within spec. So that's for a non-turbocharged 6.2. There are no turbocharged 6.2 published numbers that I've been able to find. 
just other people on the internet that come up with stuff. So yes, this is on the low end of it, but I don't want to change it. This thing starts, it runs, it probably is too far retarded. But it runs so smooth and it's so quiet, we're going to leave it alone. Alright, so you saw the screwdriver check method. The butt dyno is your best way to do this thing. Is use that check method to see if you're close. If it does the stumble and uh, people call it curl hopping, uh, you're close. Go drive it. And if you want to move it a little bit, that's at your own risk. My other, one of my other 1009s, I had it just the right spot. But I thought it could get better before I had the snap-on Lumi Mag too. I didn't know what number I was at. I moved it just a hair, and I'd never gotten as good as I was that one time. I don't know what it was. Anyway, thanks for watching.